Today we're talking about something that can very quickly kill a tree. That's up next. Hello everyone, this is Dwayne with Edge of Nowhere Farm and we're coming to you here in August of 2022. If you guys have been following us along, you know that we have over 170 fruit trees here on the farm and one of the things we're always on the lookout for, especially this time of year, is sucker growth. So this would be an example of sucker growth and we have folks ask us from time to time, how to identify those. I'll show you here in just a second, but this is actually one of our golden dorset apple trees. Now this tree we bought from Reed at RSI Growers. They grow very, very rapidly. In fact, this tree has been in the ground for less than two years. And you can see, even though we have all this growth, we also have growth down here at the base. And that's really the key when you're looking for sucker growth. And it's very important that you don't just let these be. So now a couple things you're gonna see here pretty quick. We have our root crown that is well exposed. Here in Arizona, it's very easy for us to keep wood chips up against the trunk because we're so very dry and we need to plant these up nice and high to keep them away from our caliche. So the advantage to this is when you're dealing with suckers, very easy to see that these are coming from the roots themselves and just above the root crown now, a couple things on things like apples. Right here, this is our graft point on this tree. It's grafted very, very low. Any growth that occurs below the graft point is sucker growth. This is actually coming from the root stock as opposed to the known variety or the scion, which is above it. So above it is our golden dorset. Down here, this is, well, whatever Reed uses for his rootstock for his apples. I'm gonna prune right down here, very, very close to the trunk or the roots here, and go ahead and cut these off. That is our sucker that I took off of this tree. The rootstock, because it's very aggressive and designed for our soil, it grows very, very aggressively. And what of course it's trying to do, like everything else out here, is survive and eventually propagate. So what we're doing when we remove sucker growth is stopping the rootstock from essentially taking over the tree. Now, Lori and I have been on consultations where folks are having issues with different trees. I've personally seen sucker growth completely taking over, especially things like citrus trees where sometimes it's harder to see. We're gonna head through the rest of our apple trees and see what else we have as far as sucker growth. This is our quince tree. Now, these are odd looking fruit, <laughs> that's for sure. But the good thing with these is they're a fall ripening fruit, which we have a hard time getting through our summers. These seem to be doing fine. As for the tree, one of the things you'll notice here is a very clear graft point. It's right here. Now, any growth that's above the graft point, for example, this branch right here, I'm just fine with. Now, anything that's below this graft point, like this here, this, and one further down, those have to go. Those are trying to take over my quince tree. We've been talking about apple trees here on this same side of the property. We also have fig trees. Now, fig trees will have suckers, quote unquote, coming from the base of the tree. It's very easy to see those here on this brown turkey fig that's a couple years old. Now with figs, because all of those are rooted cuttings, you don't have a rootstock. So everything that you see coming up out of the ground is actually a brown turkey fig. 
So there's no reason to remove those. In fact, you can take those as cuttings and turn them into more brown turkey figs. Now that's also the case for the majority of your mulberry trees, definitely the ones we have here. Those are rooted cuttings as well. So same thing, anything coming from the ground on your rooted cutting trees like figs and mulberries, no need to remove those. We're here at the front of the property where we have all of our citrus trees. Now, we do prune our citrus trees so we can see the base of the tree. We do that for two reasons. The first one, we're here in the Arizona desert. We have snakes. We have rattlesnakes. So the last thing we want to do is be walking by a tree and get snagged by one of those. So we make sure we trim them up slightly. The second reason we trim them up just a little bit is we want to make sure that we can see the graft point. That's very important for your citrus trees that are on very aggressive rootstocks here in Arizona because the sucker growth can be tremendous. This is our Nagami kumquat. This tree we actually had to replace from the original one. We've got four kumquat trees that are on the north side of our chicken coop and run, creating a hedge. This one is the smallest of the four. You can see it has some sucker growth here that's growing very aggressively. One of the things that's nice about citrus trees, especially here in Arizona, where most of our rootstocks are a sour orange type rootstock, these are pretty easy to tell. Number one, they obviously grow below the graft point. These are clearly several inches below the graft point. They grow pretty much perpendicular to the trunk. So the same direction as the trunk, right up against it. And again, they grow very rapidly. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove these. One of the things about these particular types of suckers is you can definitely tell the difference from the tree itself. First, you can definitely tell that these have very, very large thorns. And this particular variety of kumquat is basically thornless. So seeing thorns is a dead giveaway with this tree. The other part of it is you can see the difference in the leaves. The Nagami kumquat has a kind of a typical looking citrus type leaf, kind of a pointed leaf. And this rootstock is more of a rounded leaf and it's tri-lobed. So between the leaves and the thorns, it's very easy to tell this is sucker growth on this particular citrus tree. Here as we're in the middle of summer, heading into our fall flush time period in Arizona, that's a key time to be keeping an eye on your trees, identifying sucker growth and eliminating it as fast as you can. Trust me when I tell you, come fall when the rest of that tree is trying to grow nice and strong, it'll thank you. So just wanna thank you for joining us today. If you haven't done so already, subscribe to the channel. We cover a lot of things here on this newly established functioning farm in the Arizona desert and would love to see you on a regular basis. If you have any questions or comments, please leave those in the comment section down below. And our Amazon shop, I'll leave a link down in the description. That is a free painless way to help support the channel. If you start with the link down below, it doesn't matter what you buy, you help to support us here. So just wanna thank you for joining us today and remind you if we can farm on the edge of nowhere, so can you. All right, so today we're not talking about lollipops. That's up next. <laughs> no? <laughs>